Hi guys and welcome to my YouTube channel and today we're going to talk about this fabulous photograph I did of actress April Scott. It's an editorial piece I did out in Palm Desert. Stay tuned and I'll tell you how I put the whole thing together and what's involved in shooting with a celebrity. Well welcome back. So how did I get this fabulous photograph? Well there's quite a lot that's involved when shooting with a celebrity and the one thing I have to tell you about working with celebrities is they don't give you very much time. And for some other reason they also want to shoot in the middle of the day which is not a great thing if you're not shooting in a studio. As you know when you go outside the best time to shoot is either early in the morning or later in the afternoon. What we did was we decided that we would try to set up a shoot very very close to where April is living which is out in Palm Desert near Palm Springs in California which is not too far away from us so it was just a I think like an hour drive or a two hour drive but what I decided to do was to send someone out to look at the location before we went out there and decide where we were going to shoot. Now there are some parameters when you work with a celebrity um, you know because she has people and um, they tell you what you should be doing, what you can't be doing, what they would like, what they don't like, etc, etc. But I have a pretty good rapport with April so it wasn't too bad of a deal. So the basis of the idea was try to find a place where it was outside, not necessarily busy, but editorial looking because there was a lot of clothing involved. And uh, you can see in this shot here how fabulous the clothes look. And in this shot here, you can also see how fabulous the clothes look. Now, putting this together, we start off with figuring out what we're going to do. And as I said, I sent somebody out there to take a look at the building. Now, this is the front of the building here. And we lucked out because it wasn't as super busy. And even though everybody, you know, goes to Palm Springs and Palm Desert for their winter vacation, so to speak, uh, they were all in the restaurants. And of course, what with COVID and all the rest of it, with people wearing all their masks, they weren't running around like chickens with their heads cut off looking and uh, buying and shopping and doing all the various different things you do when you go out on a vacation. So that's how we kind of approach that as she would just be walking around, maybe shopping, doing a thing on the high street, etc, etc. The building we picked was rather large and gave me a lot of open shade to work with. And of course I used my flash fill ring light to just give me that boost that I needed to bring the light up and make it uh, viewable and not have it totally flat. And the other thing that's great about using a flash fill is that when someone's moving or walking around in front of you, you can actually freeze them as they're walking. Uh, be careful not to shoot two of a slow shutter, otherwise you get a little blur that comes off of them as they're moving. You get kind of like two exposures. You get the exposure of them moving and you get the flash fill. But using a higher sink, and working with a shallow depth field, I was able to get exactly what I wanted, keep the background out of focus, focus all my attention on the dresses and on April, and uh, get what we needed. Now, as I said, the building was really great because it had a super big parking lot in the back that we could set up shop for hair and makeup and clothes changes, and there was no one around. And it also had the beauty of having a parking garage thing, you know, a kind of a sort of an overhang thing that was also creating a lot of shadow for me too. So I was able to use that. Not everything you want in bright sunlight. Now, I usually use the bright sunlight as a fill uh, as it bounces around and sometimes I can use it as an accent from behind somebody or off to one side to give a little bit of a separation between the model and the background. Now I used an 85 millimeter lens so I was able to get exactly what I wanted, drop my backgrounds out of focus as you can see right here and get her nice and sharp. Using the flash fill freezed her and also got a little bit more crispness, a little more sharpness on the clothing as the light hit her and the clothes. Now you got to remember that if you shoot in open shade, it's a little more bluish light. It's not as red as you think it is at the end of the day. So you got to work with that. You have to also color balance everything. Uh, but you can do that in post-production quite easily today with digital. But the beauty of having, you know, your little picture on the back of the camera is you can check everything and take a look at it. Or if you want to be really finicky, you can just take the card out, put it onto your computer, take a look at it, and everybody can, you know, wow and ooh and ah over the whole thing. And then you can go back shooting again. But we wanted to get on a roll because we had a lot of clothes to shoot. And... Um, I didn't want to hold everything up, but we had a nice little area which was private so that we could, if we wanted to, really work some of the ideas out before we um, started shooting. Now, 
The thing is, is when you're on a location, always keep your eye out for little opportunities. And some opportunities just show up by themselves, and some of them you have to sort of really look for. Now, in this particular case, uh, as you can see here, April was on the phone talking to an agent about some kind of gig coming up for her, and I saw this as a great editorial piece, so I started shooting her being on the phone, and I think I got some really great shots there. In the background of this picture here, you can see there's a silver metal area, kind of a couple of swing doors that hide uh, the bins, I think, where they take out all the, the garbage and stuff, and I thought that also made a really great backdrop, as you can see in this shot right here. And you can also check it out in my little video I have of her moving around doing the little fashion thing in front of the camera, which is really great. So we were able to use a lot of different spaces around the building, which is really great. So always keep your eye out for opportunities and uh, catch them on film or as we do now, catch it on your compact flash card, your flash card, whatever you want to call it. Just make sure you look out and see opportunities when they show up because that's your job. So we got a whole bunch of different things, different clothes, different places, different looks. Uh, the only thing that didn't change was her hair other than just blowing around doing its thing because we really couldn't uh, you know, start curling up hair and doing stuff like that on location for the simple reason that the sun is coming down and you only have a certain amount of time to work with. Now we lucked out being that it's usually very, very bright sunlight out there in Palm Desert, Palm Springs area. But because we're shooting winter time for this editorial piece, the sun is lower in the sky. So it's not so bright. It's a little softer, which is really great. So there you have it. Uh, tips are Look out for things that show up on your shoot, get yourself organized, maybe check out the location before you go and have your act together to shoot the pictures that you see in your mind's eye. And at the same time, if you've got a great model to work with and some fabulous clothes, you can end up with some fabulous editorial pieces or editorial shots, should I say. And there you have it. Well, if you like that story, you might like some other things I've been doing. You can pop over to my blog, andrefelixphoto.com, and check it out. I've got lots and lots of images on there and information that will help inspire you into going out and doing some of your own shoots yourself. If you want to, you can also download a PDF of a book I put together called Tips and Tricks with Arena Vornina on the cover. She's a Playboy Playmate, actually the first Russian Playboy Playmate here in the United States. So that's an exciting shot. You can check out and find out how I did that one too. You can also follow me on Instagram. So go and follow me on Instagram. And if you have subscribed, thank you very much for subscribing. If you haven't, maybe it's time you subscribed because I'm always looking for subscribers. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And all I can say is thanks a lot and bye for now. Mm -hmm.